Hello, I'm Dr. Gerald Chodak and this is ProstateVideos.com. In this video, I want to focus on minimally invasive radical prostatectomy. That includes the laparoscopic and the robot-assisted approach. The advantages of the minimally invasive is that there's a smaller skin incision. Although it's still necessary to make an incision of several centimeters in order to remove the prostate gland. The other advantage is that there's a small amount of blood loss compared to the retropubic approach, but similar to the perineal prostatectomy. The operation is done under a general anesthetic. Prior to the operation, a patient will be scheduled to meet with an anesthesiologist to have some basic testing done to make sure it's safe to undergo the surgery. And then a person is advised not to eat or drink anything after midnight on the day before the operation and to refrain from taking any medications that might cause bleeding, such as ibuprofen or Coumadin. That medicine should start, stop about a week to 10 days before the surgery. The operation is appropriate for men that have a life expectancy of at least 10 to 15 years and their cancer is localized inside the prostate. The operation takes on average two to three hours, although it can take longer. It's done under a general anesthetic. And during the operation, the prostate is removed along with both seminal vesicles and portions of the vas deferens. After the operation, the bladder is sewn back to the urethra and a rubber tube called a catheter is left in place that comes out the tip of the penis and attaches to a bag to collect the urine. This allows the healing to occur. The catheter generally stays in place for about five to 10 days, depending on the surgeon's preference. After the operation, the patient takes time to regain urinary control and sexual function. And that depends on many factors. It can take more than a year for those to get back to normal, but they don't get back to normal in all cases. The complications of using these approaches are the same as using the other methods. Problems with erections or urinary control can occur. There can be a shortening of the penis. There can be pain after an orgasm and there can be the development of a hernia. Of course, any operation has a small risk of dying. That risk is about one in a thousand for this operation. One of the things to consider is who should do your surgery, not how should it be done. Because studies have shown that the greater the experience, then the lower the complication. Or at least if surgeons do less than 20 prostatectomies a year, they have a higher risk of getting complications compared to more experienced surgeons. So one of the things you should consider doing when you're weighing your decision is ask your doctor very specific questions. How many are done per year? How many have been done in total? And what are the complication rates by the doctor who would do your treatment? It doesn't help for you to be quoted results of some expert in another part of the United States. You want to know exactly what to expect from the doctor who's going to do the treatment. And we have ways of assessing complications using validated written questionnaires that can be given to patients who have undergone this treatment. If doctors don't use those surveys, then their results are less reliable. And many doctors don't use them, so they just estimate the complications. The bottom line is if you really want to know what to expect and what your odds are of having a problem, you need information from doctors who collect that, those results. Nevertheless, this is one of the various options we have. It is an excellent option, but there's no evidence it's better or worse than the others available. The key is your age, your health, how good your sexual function and urinary control is prior to treatment, and what type of tumor you have. All those should go into deciding which is the best approach to be used to treat your disease. Hopefully you'll find this information helpful. Thank you.